everyone welcome back and if you're new here welcome my name is Jen so in my other video I talked about my experience at Goldman Sachs and if you haven't seen it I will link it up here yeah. and today I wanted to talk about how I went from Goldman Sachs to Cornell so quick disclaimer this is what worked for me there's no right or wrong for admissions Okay, so with that in mind, first thing first, little background about me. I graduated back in 2018 at UC San Diego. I studied econ and math, and then I went to Goldman Sachs as a typical analyst program. So I was at Goldman Sachs for two years, and then I applied to several schools. I applied to more than 10 because I got scared that I won't get in. It did get rejected to more than half of them. Once again, it shows how every school is different, every application is different. So my application doesn't mean that this is right. So now let's get into requirements. Um, I am gonna go into Cornell's website. So I'm now looking at the requirements. Um, let's first talk about more general requirements that applies to all the other programs, not just for financial engineering. Okay, so first thing I wanna talk about is GRE test. According to Cornell's website, median GRE score of recent class has 165 out of 170 for verbal, 166 out of 170 for quantitative, and 3.5 out of 6 for analytical. I took GRE test twice and I decided to take the second one because it was the higher one. And my score was 162 for verbal and 169 for quantitative and 4 for analytical. And because this is engineering program, I was focusing on quantitative and also I was more confident about quantitative aspect more than verbal. For quantitative, just do a lot, a lot of questions. Once you keep doing questions over and over again, you'll get used to different types of questions. The second tip that I want to give is when you're taking the test, try to redo the questions if you have time at the end. And that's because a lot of people get it wrong, not because they didn't know, but because they were rushing. I went through the questions and when I had time, I went from question number one and then I read the, the question just to double check if I did it right. So for verbal, I know my score isn't perfect, but I was able to increase my score from 155 to 162 in about five months. And during the five months, I focused on vocab. When I was memorizing vocab, I tried to group it by synonym. That's, um, that's what worked for me when I was taking SAT2. And I think for GRE, it was also helpful because a lot of the short questions are basically asking you to pick a synonym. Moving on, if you took GRE test, and if you're international students, you also might have to take TOEFL. I didn't have to take TOEFL exam because I went to undergrad in the US. And I think here it says that um, TOEFL is waived if you're at least one of these criteria. One, you're a native citizen of US, United Kingdom, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, or Canada. Two, you studied in full-time status for at least two academic year within the last five years in US or UK, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, basically English speaking country. And I think that's it. The other requirements are you have to submit your most up-to-date resume, transcript, and two to three letter of recommendation. So for your letter of rec, um, you should at least have one or two from your academic resource, so like your professor, and one or two from your current or past managers if you do have work experience or internship. For me, what I did is I asked one from my old econ professors and one from my current manager at the time and one from my manager that moved to another firm. It doesn't really matter who you ask, but make sure you ask someone that knows you well and know what you want to study. I also asked, can you focus on my quantitative skills because my program is more quantitative. So you can just talk to your professors or your manager, ask them to highlight the things that you want them to highlight. Another big requirement for most of the grad school program is statement of purpose. Or for some schools, they actually made it into an essay and gave you prompt. For most of the schools that I applied, they were basically asking questions like, why quantitative finance? Tell me about an experience where you had to apply your quantitative skills. They're just basically asking you, why are you interested in this program? Why are you a good fit? What are you trying to achieve after this program? 
and anything along the line. So those are the requirements that will be required for most of the other programs too. One thing that I want to add is if your school provides you an info session, I recommend listening in. Every info session might be a little bit similar, but they will highlight different things that you can maybe incorporate into your essay. And also for some schools, they do provide you a code to waive an application fee if you attend the info session. So that's a little tip to save your money. Now let's move on to the requirements that might be more specific towards financial engineering program. A lot of the programs that I have applied for ask to take prerequisite courses. So the first one is to show your financial knowledge and you can show by taking an introductory finance courses or some people take CFA level one. But for me, I was working in the financial industry so I was able to show my knowledge through that. And the second requirement is that you have to show your knowledge in coding. I did not take any computer science class back in undergrad, but I did have MATLAB class and some of my math classes had to use R. I also took certification courses and online courses. And I do want to mention that there are tons of online courses that are very useful. There's YouTube, there's Coursera, EDX. If you do not have a CS as your undergrad, you can take online courses. And if that's your plan, I recommend focusing on Python, C++, and R because that's what I saw a lot of people using in the industry. And the last part is math. Um, so you need to show that you've taken a class in calculus, linear algebra, probability, statistic and or stochastic process, and differential equations. I've taken most of these classes in undergrad because my major was math. But if math is not your major and you did not take any of these courses, you can take these courses from a university that was pre-approved by Cornell. The last part I want to talk about is interview. So for Cornell, I had to do pre-recorded interview and that was pretty common, especially for this year due to COVID. But I did have to do Zoom interview with an admission officer for some of the schools. So for pre-recorded interview, it might be a little bit weird because you're just basically talking to a camera. You can't see the reaction. It's just basically like what I'm doing. I realized during my interview process that I do need a lot of practice. Hence why I'm doing this YouTube and I do feel weird right now. Oh. But yeah, so practice a lot. Um, practice just talking to a camera. Good thing about pre-recorded interview, especially for the ones that you have to upload, you can do it an infinite amount of time. So practice a lot. And for Zoom interviews, it's actually easy because admission officers, everyone that I talked to were super nice. And it was all behavioral. It was just like, tell me about yourself or tell me about a time that you were under pressure. T talk to me about your time management skills. So it was all expected and I was able to prep beforehand. So that's everything that is required to apply for the programs. So now let's talk about why did I choose Cornell? Besides it being a good program, there were a few factors that I was considering. And the first one was location. So for this program at Cornell, the first year is at Ithaca, and then the last semester will be in New York City. And I really wanted to live in Manhattan. I went there several times, I loved it. So that location was a big factor. And the second reason is, it might sound a little bit corny, but it's because of people. I actually reached out to some of the alumni from this program that are already in the industry and I've never seen anyone who actually loved the program that much. Um, maybe it could be that one specific alumni, but he was like, This program's the best. Please apply for this program. It helped me a lot. And I've never seen anyone as enthusiastic about their school as he is. So maybe I thought I would like the school as much as he does. Okay, so what now? Oh, the school doesn't even start till August. I already quit Goldman Sachs, so what am I going to do now? So my current plan is one, to study. I do not have any coding background. I took some online courses, so I'm trying to better my skills so I can do better in the program. And the second one is YouTube, hence why I started this channel. I'm currently home. I'm in Korea. I'm trying to 
share my day-to-day -day in Korea so my other videos will be more vlog style so if you are curious about anything in Korea let me know I'll try to make a video about that too and that is everything that I have for today if you have any questions on financial engineering or just grad school process in general please let me know and thank you for watching